Reliable 100% fiber internet kaya ang sarap maging tambahay with Red Fiber. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. says he disagrees with the country's inflation rate. Hours before the cabinet meeting on Tuesday, July 5, the Philippine Statistics Authority announced the country's inflation rate jumped to 6.1% in June, the highest since 2018. I think that I, I will have to I will have to disagree with that number. Uh, we are not that high. Uh, when we analyze, we have to make those uh, categorical differences. Uh, so that to better understand really what the situation is. But Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno later clarifies Marcos' remarks. The, the President's disbelief at the 6.1% June 2022 inflation rate figure was misunderstood. Okay. He was referring to it as a full year figure when in fact the year to date, meaning January to June, average inflation rate is actually 4.4%. However, during Marcos' press briefing, it was clear that reporters were referring to the 6.1% figure. Addressing the gut issue of food prices is among the priorities of the Marcos administration, as shown by his decision to take on the agriculture portfolio himself. Marcos says the Department of Agriculture will focus on ensuring food supply in the Philippines is at a price that is actually affordable. Negros Oriental Representative Arnolfo Tevez Jr. files a bill seeking to rename the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, or NAIA, to Ferdinand E. Marcos International Airport. Tevez says the airport should be named after the late Ferdinand Marcos, the father of the newly elected President Bongbong Marcos, because it was built during his term as president. But Tevez's proposal is based on false information. Rappler previously fact-checked a similar claim circulating online. NAIA, previously known as the Manila International Airport, began during the time of President Manuel Rojas in 1947. The airport's first international runway and taxiway finished construction in 1953 during the Elpidio Quirino administration. The elder Marcos assumed office in 1965 or 12 years after the airport was fully operational. The Manila International Airport was renamed in 1987 after former Senator Nino Aquino was assassinated at the airport in 1983 during the presidency of Marcos. Philippine historian Ambeth Ocampo gets mobbed by influencers and pages supportive of the Marcos administration on Facebook and YouTube. This comes after Ocampo commented on history to correct a remark made by actress Ella Cruz that likened it to rumors. Ocampo is a multi-awarded historian who is widely cited for his works on Philippine national hero Jose Rizal. Rappler found at least 20 posts across Facebook and YouTube that sought to discredit Ocampo. The attacks peaked on July 3. As of Wednesday, July 6, the posts remain online. The first and most cited post in Marcos circles was that of lawyer Nick Nangit, a lawyer known to support the Marcoses. Nangit is also repeatedly cited by Marcos vloggers to defend President Bongbong Marcos' multi-billion peso unpaid taxes. The refusal to believe in history as written by established historians is central to the Marcos disinformation and misinformation network. In the Marcos narrative, the family was the victim of the People Power Revolution despite the well-documented human rights abuses and plunder under their patriarch's regime. The University of the Philippines Diliman Student Council urges campus officials to probe the latest claim of hazing-related violence by a university fraternity. In a letter to UP official Rosalio Aragon, the student council calls for fact-finding and investigation into the reported hazing violence, made public through a series of tweets on Sunday night, July 3, by Twitter account Upsilon Leaks. The tweets contain graphic images of the alleged hazing incident. As of Monday, July 4, Upsilon leaks had been suspended for violating community standards. A new account, meanwhile, cropped up on Twitter, also posting images showing the alleged violence and decrying what it calls a pattern of covering up fraternity-linked violence in the university. The Philippine Collegian, UP Diliman's official student publication, reports the now-deleted tweets showing mauled students wearing white shirts and denim pants. The suspended Twitter account has a record of breaking news of violence involving members and officials of Upsilon Sigma Phi, one of the oldest fraternities in Asia and the oldest UP student organization. 
In 2018, Opsilon was also embroiled in a controversy after violent and misogynist conversations of alleged members leaked online, igniting a national media firestorm. Opsilon Sigma Phi counts among its prominent members the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos and slain Senator Ninoy Aquino. K-pop girl group Blackpink is making its much-awaited comeback in August. YG Entertainment confirms the group is currently in the last stages of recording their album and will start shooting their music video in July. The exact date for the official comeback has yet to be announced. A YG representative also says Blackpink is preparing for the largest scale world tour in K-pop girl group history. The August comeback will mark Blackpink's first project since October 2020 when they released their first studio-length album, The Album. Its title track, How You Like That, broke three world records. The K-pop girl group composed of Lisa, Jennie, Rosé, and Jisoo debuted in 2016.